The Karem Shalom crossing serves as the primary terminal for the entry of crucial supplies like food and medicine, essential for sustaining Gaza's population of 2.3 million Palestinians. The closure of this key crossing has drawn scrutiny toward Israel. Israel has strict obligations under international humanitarian law to ensure the safety and um, access of these individuals to medical care, to adequate food, to safe water, to sanitation. Failure to meet these obligations may amount to forced displacement, which is a war crime. Although the Israeli military announced the reopening of the Kerem Shalom crossing on Wednesday after days of closure, humanitarian aid is yet to enter Gaza. Efforts to deliver aid faced further obstacles as a group of protesters, brandishing Israeli flags, attempted to block humanitarian aid trucks at the Kerem Shalom crossing. The government of Israel and the international, uh, international support want to, to give a lot of supply to the mothers to keep them uh, fighting. It's like it's, there is no other place in the world that the, the one side at one side um, and give the supply to other sides. Like, it's, it's crazy, it's nuts. This protest was orchestrated by the Tsav Nine Inches movement, which has been staging demonstrations at various Gaza border crossings in recent months. Their aim is to impede aid deliveries in hopes of pressuring Hamas into releasing over 100 hostages held since their shocking attack on Israel on October 7th. These trucks are taking food to Hamas. Hamas are murderers, rapists, terrible, terrible people. We think that our government has been forced by the Americans to give them this food. The government doesn't like it, we don't like it. We're doing our best to stop them. And even if we just hold them up for a few hours, that's a few hours that the Hamas will not have the food, and we're happy about that. We're doing the best we can. Once again, it's crucial to emphasize that these crossings are lifelines for Gaza's population, facilitating the delivery of essential supplies such as food and medicine, upon which 2.3 million Palestinians depend for survival. The Israel-Hamas conflict has intensified with the IDF invading Rafah. Millions of people have been displaced since the beginning of the war. International communities, along with Israel's closest allies, have been warning Israel of Rafah invasion. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin Israel has confirmed that the US halted a shipment of bombs to Israel last week. From the very beginning, this decision was made due to concerns that Israel was on the brink of launching a full-scale assault on the southern Gaza city of Rafah against the expressed wishes of the U.S. And so we're going to continue to do what's necessary to ensure that Israel has the means to defend itself. Uh, but that said, uh, we are currently reviewing some near-term uh, security assistance shipments uh, in the context of unfolding events uh, uh, in Rafah. Despite the IDF's presence, this move doesn't signal the beginning of a full-scale invasion of Rafah, as previously warned by Israel. However, Aid officials express grave concerns over the extended closure of these crossings. They fear it could lead to the collapse of vital aid operations, exacerbating the already dire humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The UN has even declared a full-blown famine underway in the northern region. This has been characterized as a restricted military incursion or a limited offensive. And the first act of that offensive is to cut off the two lifelines to 2.5 million people in Gaza. The first act is to stop the fuel, stop the food, stop the medicine at source, at the border. I don't call that limited and I don't call that restricted. I call that a re-imposition of total blockade on nearly 2.5 million civilians who are already starving, who are already dying from preventable diseases uh, <clears throat> and who need our protection.